I'd rather you get mad at me and end up in heaven. It's impossible to tell people that they're headed for a devil's hell and not offend them. Who wants to hear that? Since we were born, it's always been about us. No, we got to come to the place when we know it's not about us. It's for the one that was dead and once now he's alive and behold, he liveth again. He has the keys to everlasting life. He's in authority of everything. All authority has been given to Jesus Christ. He's been made far above all principalities, powers, dominion, and might. He's the ruler. Amen. He's at the right hand of God. And at his right hand is joy forevermore. Amen. The Father does not judge. He's committed all judgment to the Son. And later on in the book of John, Jesus says, I don't judge any man. It's the word that I have sent to you that's going to judge everyone. Meaning one thing, that God created everything by his word. Everything was made by the word of God. The one who came, the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the, the image of the Father, the brightness of his coming. And upholds all things by the word of his power. And in Revelation 19, you see Jesus Christ, eyes like fire, to a sword coming from his mouth, riding a white horse, coming to make war with those who are coming against Jerusalem. That two-edged sword that comes from his mouth is the word of God. Meaning that he created everything with his word. He upholds all things with his word. And he's going to judge all things by his word. We all will be judged by the word of God. It's not just you. We all shall appear there. To those that have been given much light, they're going to be required to operate in the light that God has given you. But however, however, God is still requiring that we seek to find more light. Praise God if we can master the light that we have right now to realize that our deeds are still not on the right track with God. His kingdom is of another place. Your allegiance is to the kingdom of God. To live by the word of God. The kingdom of this world will pass away. When the Son of God comes and takes rulership over this world and things will be back to normal back when the lion could lie down with the lamb and the little child shall lead them that's how safe it will be on planet earth but people in their flesh even when the devil is not there to deceive you will still be so ready for deception that's how easy it is to be deceived in this world but if you set your heart to get to know the Lord, you yourself can be born again and enter into the newness of life, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ to exalt him for how he really is. I've heard stories about people seeking to know God and it didn't happen overnight. They sought him for a very long time. They would hide away with the Lord for a long time. They would go into the mountains to be with the Lord a long time saying, God, I don't want to just learn about you. I want to know you for myself. And months later, the Lord came to meet. The Lord came to meet with him and then he glorified God. The tears came streaming down his face and he glorified the creator of heaven and earth. If you knew it was possible for you to know the God of heaven, would you do anything you could to go there? Anybody who truly seeks will truly find. If we listen to a gospel that doesn't have any seeking involved, we may never find the Lord. The Bible says to seek with all your heart and he will be found of you. If we haven't found God, it's because we were seeking with someone else's help who doesn't know God. Find somebody who has encountered the power of the cross. Find somebody who knows how to worship, like the Philadelphia church. No matter how far you've gotten from God, the, even the synagogue of Satan came to worship at the feet of the Philadelphia church, and they glorified the God of heaven. 
Get around somebody who's already caught the fire. Find somebody who loves to pray with and without their understanding. Hallelujah. And glorify God. Some of the needs that we have in our soul are only going to come in a way that we don't even know. Because what we, what we need in our spirit is something that we don't know. And God slowly starts to reveal himself to us and become the satisfier of our soul. Little by little, he starts to let you know that he can be trusted of you. Little by little, he lets you know his love is very real for you. Little by little, he will be the one to confirm that he has welcomed you into his kingdom. Only the God of scripture can tell you you're born again. Only the God who made you can awaken you to his righteousness. Only the God of scripture can convict you. Only the God who made you can show you how to repent personally. I'll give you a few ideas of the lifestyles I know will not continue to walk in the spirit. I know there are people who have been born again and continued in sin for a little while. But if you continue in sin too long, eventually you're going to grieve the Holy Spirit too much. And you'll depart from the way. I want you to come into the faith that saves, that you can be confirmed by His own Spirit for your own, your own knowledge. The knowledge of the Holy. The fear of the Lord is the real gospel. Revelation chapter 14, the angel preaching the everlasting gospel to all the world. He says, fear God and give glory to Him. That's the real gospel. The power of God unto salvation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Any other gospel, let it be accursed, Paul said. No man taught it to me. It was by revelation of Jesus Christ. I need the Father to reveal His Son to you. And at that point, you'll have the beginning. And you'll know how to follow Him to the end if you want to. Because you'll get to know His Holy Spirit. You'll get to know His voice. But in this world, this wicked and adulterous generation, we lose our integrity very early. Most people do. They allow things that are not true in their hearts. And God wants to bring us back to that innocent place. God made men upright, but man chose evil. Overall, it's about a life of seeking to know God. The hand of our God is upon all of them that seek Him for good. The hand of our God is upon all of them for good that seek Him. But His power and His wrath is against all of them that forsake Him. So the question, according to Amos, would be, are you forsaking him or are you forsaking him? Whether I'm around or not, you can seek the Lord anytime, especially when the waters of Bethesda are moving. Miracles happen when the water is moving. The washing of the water of the word is moving. In this place, the water can come to your heart. In this place, the sea can get through your heart that is already used to its own specific ways. We pack down the way we see things right now. But the prophet comes out and says, break up your fallowed ground. It's time to seek the Lord. The shaking has to happen first. The gospel has to strike the air first to break through our fallow ground. That's what it takes to be born again. God hasn't come to leave us the way we are. He's come to save us. He's come to resurrect our souls, to raise us from the dead. We didn't even know that we were dead. Physically, you were alive. But outside of Jesus Christ, you're spiritually dead. That's what happened in the garden when Adam and Eve took the, the fruit, the forbidden fruit. They died spiritually. And we were all born of a man who is dead spiritually. But Jesus says, if you come unto me, I will give you life. We were all born of someone who wasn't in covenant with God. But God always has a covenant for anybody who wants to seek him. He's a God of order, and He's a God of holiness, and He's a God of righteousness. This is all made clear in everything that's natural. We all have a sense of justice. You got that from God. Amen. You were made in the image of God to know what's right and wrong. 
to a certain extent. You're, even in your flesh, you know what's right and wrong. When you say it's okay for Islam to come to America, you're saying it's okay for a book to teach people that pedophilia is okay. Because that's what their book teaches. So when you say amen to Islam, you're saying amen to having sex with children. I've seen a street preacher, a Muslim street preacher, confronted by somebody who says, is it your book that says it's okay to sleep with children? And the Muslim said, it will not harm the child. He didn't say no. Are you crazy? He said, yes, it will not harm the child. That's a normal custom in Islam. If you're against pedophilia, praise God for that. Stay that way, please. Because like 30 years ago, when it was considered strange for a man to lie down with a man, and now it's normal. Right now, pedophilia is still crazy in the mind of 99% of Americans. But for the last three years, at least, pedophilia is being taught as though it's another sexual orientation. I would love to know that you still have a little bit of American blood and say, not in my country. Can we let the little children grow up a little bit and be consenting adults and stay Americans? When we bring ideologies from other countries to America, we get their judgments as well. So when I come against Islam, I'm not coming against a race. I'm coming against a belief in a God who I know is the devil. If you want to invite Satan into America, don't get mad when he starts devouring everybody like he always does everywhere. Islam always comes into a nation peaceably and then they dominate when their numbers are strong enough. That's what they've been doing for 1400 years. And now we don't learn from history. We're going to burn from not knowing truth. We're going to get chewed up by the communists as our nation continues to be demoralized. That is the language of Hitler. And you want that kind of a language to be in America. Don't get mad at God as you push him away. Don't say, where was God when all these terrible things happened? You kicked him out of your school. You kicked him out of your church. You kicked him out of your family. You kicked him out of your own mind. Don't say, where was God? God is saying, where were you when I asked you to call and follow me? Where were you? Where was your faith when I asked you to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me every day? To daily cross you take up or you're not a true disciple of Jesus Christ. So will you be ready when the Son of God comes and lights up the sky? As lightning shineth from the east and so it shines even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Everybody's going to see him. The same way everybody's going to see Jesus Christ, who's going to be brighter than the noonday sun, brighter than anything to our known world, is the same obviousness that he has put in all of creation. People want to ask me, where's your evidence for God? I say, my friend, after you're born again, the question changes to where isn't the evidence of God? It's all in the way you look at it. If you believe in science, can you please tell me what that word means? The word science means knowledge. Natural knowledge. I believe in natural knowledge. I believe in science. I believe in biology. I believe in all the laws of nature. And I believe the best science book in world history is the King James Bible. Sounds crazy to us now. I'll prove it to you. In the science world, in the secular world, who tries to promote the doctrines of evolution, they know they don't know where everything came from. They know they don't know where matter came from. And they know they don't know how non-living matter turned to living matter. And they also know they don't know how living matter turned into human life. 
But yet they continue to propagate this nonsense that they themselves know is not true. God made you smarter than that. It's foolishness to say there is no God. The, cosmo the cosmological model is enough to make anybody fall to their knees. To look at one human cell is more complicated than all the technology we have in this world. And yet we think we have come here by accident. Any closer to the sun, we'd burn up. Any further from the sun, we'd freeze to death. My friends, it's all so obvious. You have 12 systems in your human body right now. They all have to be there at the same time or you would not be alive. How can that evolve? Where are the billions of half monkey, half men anywhere? They can't even find one except Lucy that is not even the same animal. My friends, you're going to give your soul to a doctor that only has one piece of evidence that's not even legitimate? I know the story behind Lucy. It was a man who was paid a lot of money to find evidence and he couldn't find it, so he took whatever he could get. We don't have any fossil evidence for the transitions you say you believe in. We have pictures, we have cartoons, but we don't have any rock solid evidence for it, but yet you continue to go there even though it counts for your soul. It's not scientific. I have a 1828 dictionary, Webster's Dictionary, and it tells you what evolution really means. Has absolutely nothing to do with Charles Darwin's ideas at all. Because Americans used to be smart enough to never even think that way, let alone believe it and teach it. And make my tax dollars pay for it. How are you? Atheists have insults and dirty language. They don't have arguments. Atheists always walk by. Because when the preacher comes here and shows you the truth, they continue running and cussing. You know why? Because their deeds are evil. Not because of a factual thing, it's an emotional response. That's all it was. An emotional response because something bad happened in your past and you're mad at God for it. But you know he's real. Does truth exist? There are some things we do know we know. It's an insult to our God-given intelligence to say that there isn't a final truth. Of course there's objective truths. As soon as you lose that, you've lost. There are some things that are only opinions, but there are some things that are objective truths, and you do know those things. You can know. With the things that you know right now are stepping stones to the throne of Almighty God. Anybody can go there. How are you? What's your, what's your beef? <laughs> See? No arguments from the atheist just yet. Bring out all your counselors, bring all your professors out here, I'll take them all on with half my brain tied behind my back. They will never come. Okay, I've read the Bible and it says Christians have to go through persecution on the earth. Okay? So, uh, what benefit is to be a Christian on the earth if you're going to be persecuted? What? So you can go to heaven? Is that all I got to look forward to? <laughs> well, seriously. I've read the Bible, and it says that Christians will be persecuted. And so... Yeah, well, Jesus, Je Jesus was crucified too. How are you? <laughs> Jesus was crucified as well. Okay. He says, with much, with much tribulation, we enter into the kingdom of God. People think that coming to God is going to save all your problems. No, it's not going to save all your problems. You're going to enter into a war. It's a very long war that's been going on between heaven and earth. And those who are of the kingdom of this world... They're going to be fighting against the principles of God for those who stand for the word of God. There's always going to be a war between them. You have to take your sides. Are you going to be on God's side once and for all? Or are you going to be on Satan's side once and for all? Because Satan's the one who rules the government lands. The government rulers of this world always has and always will. Except for a mighty miracle of God coming around.